I want to thank the CSL music team for all the great music. And Nancy works for reading today. This is our final week in our series of Chop Wood, Carry Water, which is a book by Rick Fields. Each week is independent, so the good news is that they're all out on our website. So if you missed one or want to watch one again, they're all available at cslsoutheastla.org. And today we're talking about those side trips that we take on our spiritual journeys. Some of the things that we might call perils of the path. I'm happy that you've joined us as we continue on this journey to enlightenment by looking at how we chop wood and carry water while recognizing that there are perils on the path. Perhaps it's time that we remember what the Dalai Lama tells us about balance. A balanced and skillful approach to life, taking care to avoid extremes, becomes a very important factor in conducting one's everyday existence. We'll talk more about that in a minute. For now, the question of the week. What is the one choice that you can make today to embrace the power within you, to set realistic expectations, and to see obstacles as stepping stones to a higher perspective? One more time. What is the one choice you can make today to embrace the power within you, to set realistic expectations, and to see obstacles as stepping stones to a higher perspective? Whenever we embark on a journey, and this one, chop wood, carry water, which was a spiritual one, we often encounter obstacles or detours along the way. It's how we handle the obstacles and detours that truly matters. Do we allow them to disturb the pleasure of our journey? Or do we see them as a way to see more of the countryside, so to speak, to enjoy what is out there that we might not have put on our places to visit list? In his chapter on perils of the path, Rick Fields discusses a number of obstacles related to spiritual journeys some of them quite specific to certain types of spiritual practice like meditation or kundalini, which refers to a specific type of meditation believed to awaken your potential for awareness. I'm gonna invite you to read the chapter as it's quite interesting. And I wanna expand on the perils of the path in today's world of 2022. The perils of the path to spiritual awareness are merely obstacles that we learn to face. Anything, material or immaterial, that impedes progress or achievement and that stands in the way of literal or figurative progress. For example, last week I talked about us learning to aim placing our attention on an intention so that we can manifest it. One of the perils of aiming, as well as of spiritual prayer, is that we often expect manifestation results too quickly. So we give up on our prayers or we give up on aiming because we don't feel the result is forthcoming quickly enough. The most important thing for us to remember on this spiritual journey is we're human. That's almost a synonym for you're running the obstacle course of life on planet Earth. The good news is that obstacle courses typically have smooth areas and difficult ones, just like life. The real question is, what do we often choose to do when we face an obstacle of life. Often we set unrealistic expectations or we worry about the obstacles. Dr. Dennis Merritt Jones wrote this. In Zen, there is an old saying, the obstacle is the path. Know that a whole and happy life is not free of obstacles, quite the contrary. A whole and happy life is riddled with obstacles. They simply become the stepping stones that help lift us to a new perspective. 
If the obstacle is the path, it seems important that we learn to deal well with obstacles in a positive way, to truly allow each obstacle to become a stepping stone and provide us with a higher perspective. I mentioned earlier that perils of the path can be those side trips or detours that we take on our spiritual journey. If we embrace the perils as opportunities to see things more clearly or to see things with a larger view, they can become those stepping stones to a new perspective and to deeper spiritual awareness. The Dalai Lama tells us how to do this. We have this marvelous gift of human intelligence and a capacity to develop determination and use it in positive ways. Any obstacle can become an opportunity to use that marvelous gift of intelligence and look beyond the obvious. Think outside the box. Become more aware of who you are and who you're meant to be on earth. Since I suspect that all of us would like to no longer be disturbed by obstacles, it seems it's time for us to embrace the power within us to overcome them. Christian Larson in Pathways of Roses warned us about making obstacles more impactful than they need be. Here's what he had to say. No obstacle should ever be called by that name or ever thought of as being an obstacle. For it is, in truth, something that will enable you to prove to yourself that the power that is within you is greater than anything in this world. When we no longer call obstacles obstacles, or difficulties difficulties, we shall not be disturbed by obstacles or difficulties anymore. Now that's truly an interesting observation, isn't it? In this philosophy, we believe that there is a power within us from which we are inseparable. Yet, how often when the going gets tough, do we dig deep within ourselves to tap into that power? How often do we ask for help from friends, from family, from our minister? How often do we pause and move from our head to our hearts, asking our hearts what steps we might take to move out of our current situation into something that's more empowering or more joyful? I venture to say it's not often enough. In what religious science teaches, Ernest Holmes spoke of our philosophy and how to remove obstacles reminding us that it is a science and it's built on laws of our mind. He writes of a definite technique for removing obstacles. This is done by making certain definite statements with the realization that they have power to remove any obstacle, to dissolve any false condition, and to reveal humankind's spiritual nature. I certainly know I want to reveal humankind's spiritual nature. So it seems I must learn to make definite statements about my ability to dissolve false conditions. I like to use affirmations, which truly are just affirmations turned into a question. I do that because while the mind might have objections to definitive statements, the mind wants to be able to answer questions. We are wired to be able to answer questions. For example, if the obstacle is money, rather than saying, God is my source, to which your head might say, yeah, but I have to pay these bills. How about saying, how is it I so easily and willingly know God is my source? Now, your mind is not going to object to that question, and what's going to happen is it opens the mind to see all the ways that God provides and all the ways that you truly are abundant. Try it. It's 
absolutely wonderful. And that's why I provide affirmations at the end of every service. One of the many perils of the path is setting unrealistic expectations of ourselves and others about how things should be. To overcome this, we learn to set realistic expectations and know that change takes time. When we set unrealistic expectations, we're actually setting ourselves up for hurt or for failure. If you think about it, most of the hurt that you have experienced in your life most likely came from expectations that didn't get met. To prove my point and test this theory, Think of the last time you were truly hurt and ask yourself, what were you expecting to have happen? Did it actually happen? Probably not. Expectations not met. We expect things and depend upon how much energy or attachment we have to the outcome. If what we expect doesn't happen, we're disappointed possibly even hurt deeply. If you watch a baby as they start to walk, you don't see them cry every time that they end up sitting on their bottoms. Their obstacle is learning to be stable on their legs and they have no expectations that they're gonna make it across the room. They're just experimenting with what might happen. Wouldn't life be fabulous if we could all have that life philosophy? I'm experimenting. I'm seeing what might happen with this obstacle. This is known in some circles as the scientific observer approach to life. You just watch and observe without expectations of the outcome. For Buddhists, this way of life is about non-attachment releasing any attachment to an outcome, essentially not allowing one's own expectation to dictate one's happiness level. Now, that's much harder to do than it seems, or maybe you know that it's harder to do. Trust me, it can be. If you go into any situation with expectations that something might happen, you can be highly disappointed when what you expected doesn't happen or your theory about it didn't work out. When we expect our efforts should produce certain results within a certain time frame, we can become disappointed and the obstacle can become more important in our life than it need be. When you embarked on this spiritual journey around chop wood, carry water, did you have expectations? If you've been watching for the last 11 weeks, if you expected certain things or made certain promises to yourself about your spiritual practices, perhaps you succeeded and perhaps not. What's important is that you're on the journey. You're taking steps towards better understanding of your relationship with the divine. In The Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes wrote this. We already live in a perfect universe, but this needs to be seen before it can become part of our experience. The origin of every problem is ultimately to be found within us, and the answer to every problem will be discovered in spiritual realization. The origin of every problem is ultimately to be found within us, and the answer to every problem will be discovered in spiritual realization. I repeated that last part because it's very important. When we become the scientific observer when dealing with overcoming obstacles and knowing that the answer to every problem is discovered in spiritual realization, we avoid the perils of the path and we get to see every obstacle just part of our life experience. I love what Viktor Frankl said about the meaning of life in his book, 
man's search for meaning because it so describes how we move through any perils of the path to our spiritual enlightenment. He said this, For the meaning of life differs from man to man, from day to day, and from hour to hour. What matters, therefore, is not the meaning of life in general, but rather the specific meaning of a person's life at a given moment. Is that not brilliant? I know for me that what I need and what I'm seeking differs from day to day and yes, sometimes even from hour to hour. And it's most certainly different from what my sister or my daughter or my friends might be seeking. We're each on our own spiritual journey. Even if we travel a road together with another, we see different landscapes along the way, depending upon what we happen to be focusing on. And we each have our own inner enemies with which we contend. So what might be an obstacle to me might seem easy to another person. And what I know is that the obstacles can really get under our skin. Further, whether we react as angry or anxious, the perils of our path change our level of calm. Is that true for you? I know it's true for me. And the truth is, we're all going to get angry from time to time. We're going to experience anxiety. We might even experience low self-esteem in some area. The trick is to do what the Dalai Lama says to do in life. Learn to look at the situation from a different perspective. In his words, the ability to shift perspectives can be very helpful. Then practicing this, one can use certain experiences, certain tragedies to develop a calmness of mind. Actually, Obstacles are yet another gift for us to learn to deal with our own inner enemies, such as anger or anxiety. When our obstacles seem to be coming from someone else's behavior, we can get into the how could they attitude, taking things as a direct affront on us. I love what Lessons 31 and 33 in The Course of Miracles reminds us. Lesson 31 says, I am not a victim of the world I see. And when we're in that how could you mode, we're victims. And lesson 34 says, I could see peace instead of this. The truth is, we get to choose what we see and how we see it. In the Four Agreements by Ruiz, we read that taking things personally can lead to all types of pain and suffering. So if your obstacle is about taking something personally or having someone hurt you after you were kind to them, get over it and see peace instead. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but we can move into forgiveness and we can choose peace. When we allow someone else's behavior to get under our skin and create an inner enemy of anger or upset or hurt, we're failing to remember that we're in charge of our own emotions. We are moving into that victim mode. The inner enemies are taking over. When we know who we are and are steeped in who we are, no one can uproot our sense of our own well-being. I want to repeat that. When we know who we are and are steeped in who we are, no one can uproot our sense of our own well-being. I know that's easier said than done, trust me. The Dalai Lama also says, it is exactly this willful intention to harm us that makes the enemy unique and gives us the precious opportunity to practice patience. Now, I admit I am not one to embrace an opportunity to practice patience. 
I think when the divine was handing out God qualities, I forgot to get in that line for patience for myself. Yet, what if when obstacles arise from the acts of others, we make the conscious decision to embrace a different perspective and stay in our peace and calm rather than embracing our inner enemies of anger, hurt, anxiety, or low self-esteem. And one final comment on that. Perils of the path might require changing our motivation. Obstacles can sometimes bring us to a halt. If we focus only on the obstacles, our life can seem dismal, and we might miss the rainbow beyond our view of the obstacle. The Dalai Lama tells us that life is about balance. A balanced and skillful approach to life, taking care to avoid extremes, becomes a very important factor in conducting one's everyday existence. When it comes to obstacles in our life, the balance becomes about moving forward while also dealing with whatever difficulties the obstacle might be presenting in our own life. Think about it for a bit. Sometimes we just need to change our motivation to an underlining one of compassion and kindness towards whomever created the difficulty. And sometimes we created our own difficulties, right? It's our own self. If we can let go of the anger or of the behavior which created the obstacle and be compassionate, forgiving, and kind, we change. The Dalai Lama said this, in discussing an approach to bringing about positive changes within oneself, learning is only the first step. There are other factors as well. Conviction, determination, action, and effort. Learning helps us develop a conviction to change. And once we have a conviction that change is necessary, we can develop a determination to take action in ways that help us make an effort to change our reality, to look at it different. Lesson 79 in Course of Miracles said, let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. Let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. In attempting to develop this new attitude of compassion, what if we truly learn today's lesson of balance in our lives, changing our motivation to one that helps us to see the joy in living each moment rather than the obstacles that happen to be in front of us? What if we really learn to change our motivation around obstacles to one that they're lessons that teach us to be determined to take action in our lives and make the effort to be more compassionate under all circumstances. In our spiritual growth of letting our soul pilot us and knowing we tap into the infinite wisdom of the divine, it's also true that we need a balanced approach of spiritual practices. If all we do is pray, nothing's going to happen. We have to pray and move our feet have the determination to make it happen, and the foresight to know that a realistic expectation is that overcoming an obstacle might not happen overnight. Sometimes change takes time. If we let go of the anger and of the behavior of ourselves and others and let go of feelings as though life is sometimes against us, we will learn to be more compassionate, forgiving, and kind, and will recognize that the divine is always for us. Life is for us. And the interesting part is when we start changing, the world takes notice. I invite you to take an attitude of non-attachment to outcomes, to live in a more content place where your actions are 
or in alignment with where your soul is trying to guide you. May you approach each obstacle, each peril of the path, with conviction, determination, effort, and action, knowing there is a lesson for you in each one that is leading you to a power within you greater than anything in the world, a power that can overcome any peril of your path. So in summary, decide how you want to handle those perils of the path to your spiritual enlightenment. Embrace the power that's within you, remembering that Zen saying, the obstacle is the path. And use your affirmations to help remind you to think positive. Set realistic expectations and be that scientific observer. If we think of life as an experience, just watch and observe, we can be on a journey and accept the detours. The origin of and the answer to each problem is right within us. So see obstacles as stepping stones to a higher perspective. Live life from hour to hour and avoid extremes. You can see peace instead of difficulties and obstacles. Engage conviction, determination, action, and effort. So here's your affirmation for the week. How is it that I so easily and willingly make the choice today to embrace the power within me, to set realistic expectations, and to see obstacles as stepping stones to a higher perspective? And your challenge for the week is this. Adopt an attitude of non-attachment to obstacles. See the obstacle as the path. And live in that more content place where your actions are in alignment with where your soul is trying to take you. Approach every peril of the path with conviction, determination, effort, and action. Knowing there is a lesson for you in each one of those obstacles that's leading you to that power within you that's greater than anything in the world. So let us pray. We just take a deep nourishing breath and we breathe in all that the divine is. The love, the joy, the peace, the ease, the grace, the calm, the power the knowledge, the wisdom. And we accept that that power and that wisdom and that peace and that ease is absolutely who we are as an expression of the divine. And what I know is that this week, each of us, as we encounter obstacles or any side trip or detour that happens to be taken, that we are recognizing those detours as an opportunity to get a different viewpoint and to see things from a higher perspective. Hmm. I am so grateful. I am so grateful for this opportunity to remember that the power within me is the answer to any obstacle that shows up. That there is wisdom and intelligence and love and compassion and forgiveness within me that can overcome any peril that shows up on my path. And I know that to be the truth of each person watching this service and each person on the planet. So I am grateful. I am grateful for every opportunity to be a part of your lives in some small way, to bring messages 
that I know are uplifting. And I release my words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing that God always says yes. The answer is always yes. All of this is already done. Each of us is on our own way. Understanding how to overcome perils of the path. And so it is with that knowing that I just release these prayers, knowing they're already done. I say amen, and we affirm it together. And so it is. And once again, I want to just be grateful to the people that are providing us with income so that we can continue to provide these services. I'm grateful for all of the love and the donations that are coming in, for all of the help that I have, for the people that are providing service to this community in so many ways. So thank you very much and enjoy our offertory song. <laughs> 